GCSE Biology 244, Structure of the Thorax. Uh, the thorax is the biological term for the chest. And the chest is defined by uh, a cage of bone called the ribs. The ribs extend from a bone at the front called the sternum. So let's put sternum. This is the breastbone, which sits on uh, approximately in this region here. And the ribs come out from this and curve round towards the backbone. So the attachment here is to the backbone. Between the ribs are two sheets of muscle, one going this way on the inside and one going this way. Muscle fiber is going this way on the outside and these muscles are called the intercostal muscle and are responsible for the movement of the chest cavity up and down uh, in the breathing process. Perhaps students will be more familiar with intercostal muscle as this is the meat tissue that we eat when we eat spare ribs. Air enters the thorax through a tube beginning at the back of the, the mouth and throat and descending down into the lung area of the thorax. This tube is called the trachea, more commonly known as the windpipe. The windpipe is known to have cartilage present to support the tracheal tissue and stop it from collapsing when we breathe out. So this is cartilage and um, often described as rings of cartilage but in fact many of the so-called rings of cartilage actually form uh, C shapes like this, not quite completely closing to form a ring. So these are the cartilage rings and they support the tracheal tissue stopping it from collapsing when we breathe out. The trachea having entered the thorax divides into two and these two divisions are known as the bronchi and these are also supported with cartilage to prevent collapse. The right bronchi takes air down into the right side of the lung and the left bronchi takes air down into the left side of the lung. The bronchi very quickly divide and these divisions carry on until the tubes that we are forming are microscopic. These tubes formed by the division of the bronchi are called bronchioles. Many of the larger ones will also have cartilage support. Having divided smaller and smaller to the level of microscopic, the bronchi occupy most of the lung tissue and end in dead end tubes where the surface area has slightly increased and these dead end structures are known as alveoli and of course alveoli is the site of gas exchange 
between air and blood and of course the two gases we're concerned with are the intake of oxygen and the excretion of carbon dioxide if we draw a general diagram of lung tissue here's the trachea and here's the right lobe of the lung and this could be the left lobe of the lung we should be aware that on the surface surrounding the whole lung tissue is a membrane that will sit across the surface this membrane is called the pleural membrane and this this particular one that sits on the surface of the lung tissue is called the inner pleural membrane surrounding the inner pleural membrane is another membrane and we're going to just create a space here between the two the size of this space in this diagram is greatly exaggerated and the real space is very small indeed I'll just take that to here and to here and this space is filled with a fluid that is known as pleural fluid around the outside the membrane on the outside is the outer pleural membrane looking for the position of the ribs the rib cage of course sits around the outside like this just do this quickly with the intercostal muscles between and the outer pleural membrane is attached to the rib cage so it, the outer pleural membrane is attached to the rib cage the inner pleural membrane is attached to all the lung tissue and between the two we have the pleural fluid and one of the functions of pleural fluid is to reduce the friction as the lungs move during ventilation however there are other, are other uh, perhaps more important mechanical advantages to having pleural fluid 